No pockets on the dead. You stay over the living. Why hesitate before the dead? No, don't touch me. Touch, just claim your corpses. Touch them, or forever join them. But startled his career. He started to carry by looting the living, but soon found himself trapped by the ghouls in a violated graveyard and forced to rob the dead. Too late, he learned the terrible truth. There are no pockets on the dead. Whilst most people ride the subway to work, Martin and Craig makes his living by just riding the subway. At a rush hour, crowds press together, close, close together. He long packed his fingers, fervently dip into their pockets, unsuspecting. When the rush hour ends, Craig returns his cheap room and examines the loot. Dollar bills are stripped from stolen wallets. Watches are praised, but suddenly a key with a dress tag, a real prize, might be worth casing the house. The key to the front door, robbery, would be a cinch. The next day, Craig locates the house. It's an out-and-out out the way section. But it may, it might as well make the job look even easier. It looks kind of run down on the outside. Oh, what, but I'm interested in what's inside. For hours, Craig watches the house, but no one enters or leaves. When a stroke of midnight, the lights go off. Then there's four shredding men emerge. There's the doors locked. I don't have to, I don't, lo- I wouldn't lose my key. All right, I heard enough about my lost key. I still don't can't understand what happened to it. I found no one. I hope no one found it. Here are our valuable things inside. Even if someone found the key, they're not the sort of things that anyone is likely to steal. And two nights, Craig watches the house, and the same night, each night the routine is the same. Twelve o'clock, and there they come. This time, as soon as they go outside, I'll go. It's always a stay away from at least an hour. Plenty of time to find these valuable things that Creek mentioned. The old door creaks, opens, and Craig's footsteps echo through the musty, silent room, dark building. Flashlight searches, empty room from room after room, in vain, but upstairs it's weaving beam, suddenly revealing, sunny and shuri, a gruesome setting. Human fingers, earth, if ears, teeth, no wonder the, gen- the men who live here leave after midnight, they're ghouls. Feel the loathing and horror. Craig still bakes away. The mobile prize is stolen from the grave. So any noise is heard downstairs. The door's opening, they must be back. They must, they won't be expecting someone here. Maybe they could be safe in this cupboard. Inside the musty cupboard. Craig hears a footstep approaching. He trembles in terror. You know, when one reaches for the closet door, minutes pass. There's a man talking low, sinister tone, but then dust in the closet. Too much for the craggy sneezes. What are you doing, the devil? Are you doing here? Don't let him go away. He must be a police spy. I'm no stoogy. Honest, I'm just a dip. I just, I just his key from one of your pockets. Couldn't resist the temptation. I'll use it. Let me go. I never tell what I saw here. You see your pit pickle? Well, I have the perfect way you can prove it. And if you don't, you'll never tell anyone anything again. He hands and feet tied. Craig is false. I watch the lurid excitement as a ghoul's strip rings from fingers and gold fillings from teeth. The night day, next day, he led to a private cemetery. This is a grave of familiars only. The sister there are supposed to be loaded with jewels. Uh, you lift the, you're to lift the guard's key. Under threat of violent death, Craig trembles. Then he approaches the guard, engages the conversation, clever fingers claim the key. Soon after, he returns to the depredated mansion of the ghouls. Here's the subject key. Now let me go. Not so fast, my dear friend. You know how crafty your fingers are. You'll go with us tonight till we know this key opens the grave of the gate. At a stroke of twelve, the five men set out for the cemetery. As the night watchman moves well beyond the gate, the key slipped in and the ghouls start forward. 
It works now. Take your hands off me. Soon, if the rumours are right, we need your help tonight. You'll join us in rail being the dead. Quickly, the practice scavengers of the dead. A loaf of coffee and Craig's trembling is false to aid them as they pray over the lid. It's lifting. Now to see how the living can profit from the dead. So the green moulding face stares up for its coughing up at them. Look at the rings and his stiff fingers. What earrings? When we force them over the mouth, but you find a tiny sum of feelings. What a wonderful sight. And as Craig holds back the knife, back the coffee lid, goes draw a knife, sets to work. Here, stop shaking and hold his finger, and don't try to palm off, palm off his ring, the ring. And as the terrified Craig watches, half sick with fright and loathing, a lurid spectacle, sunny and cold fit hand, gold, gold fingered teeth are dropped into his hand. Just look at the feelings, fabulous about it. Rubbing the dead is more profitable than looting the pockets of the re- living. The other coffins are open and waiting. We've got, we've no time to lose. Take this knife and get to work. You mean you want me to do what you do, you done? Never. Don't let a uh, screen stop, stop you. I touch, I'm not touching those rotten corpses. Where's that night watchman? Grab him. Don't let him escape. No, you're not stopping me, you pack of grave rubbing ghouls. Get the knife. Before Craig could cry for help, palming hands beat him mercilessly, the grave rolled around, his conscious dumping to the second coffin. Kalgara! Quickly, Craig is placed in a looted coffin and horror. However, the hairless, earless, motility covered her. Cadaver is then lowered on top of the unconscious pin pocket. You can't bury him. He's not dead yet. He will be once we close the coffin lid top. And as the coffin lid begins to close, Quagma comes to in one shocking second, the savage terror. He feels a dead weight on top of him. Then sees the lowering lid closed down. Oh, stop! The lid closes, a muffled scream is heard. Then grim silence, the minutes tick by. He should be suffocated in the airtight coffin. Well, now open it and let's see. He dead. Look at his hands. Look at the side of that, that of that stiff. He he. What a fate for a pickpocket. A dead have no pockets.